Good morning, everybody. I'm Margaret Wehara, and I'm the management counselor for Tri Missions in Vienna. We're gathered here today to observe the anniversary of the horrendous terror attacks on the United States of America that took place on September 11, 2001, nine years ago today. Ambassador Kelly, DCM Wood, Magister Isabella Rauscher from the Austrian Foreign Ministry, Tri Mission staff, colleagues, friends, good morning, and thank you very much for being here today. Last year, President Obama signed legislation to officially recognize September 11th as the National Day of Service and Remembrance. It has been just one year since this proclamation and nine years since the life-changing events that occurred at the World Trade Center in New York City, the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., uh, and a field in Pennsylvania. We gather here today, we join here today, to commemorate those lost during one of the darkest moments in our country's history, and to honor the lives that were taken in the terrorist attacks of September 11th, 2001. On that beautiful, sunny Tuesday, innocent passengers from the United States and around the world boarded four airplanes. As part of a coordinated attack plan, the airliners were hijacked by extremists with an agenda to do harm to America and quite frankly, uh, to all the world. Passenger jets were used as missiles, two of which brought down the World Trade Center towers, while the third hit the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. Heroic passengers on the fourth hijacked plane forced it to crash in a Pennsylvania field rather than its target in Washington. Amidst the tragedy, we can find some solace, some solace in the moments of compassion and heroism that took place in the fragile hours and days following the attacks. The goodness of the people shined through the darkness of injury, death, and destruction. We express our gratitude to all those who courageously responded to the disaster, firefighters, the police force, civil servants at the Pentagon, our uniformed countrymen and women, passers-by on the streets of New York City, to name but a few. For their kindness and sacrifice, we owe them a debt of gratitude to never forget. In this spirit of service to others, this day of observance calls for not only commemoration of the victims, but also for continued acts of kindness and selflessness such as were exhibited in the wake of this disaster. By helping one another, our country experienced a renewed sense of unity and found strength in coping with this tragedy. In the words of our president, when you choose to serve, whether it's your nation, your community, or simply your neighbor, you are connected to that fundamental American ideal that we want life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, not just for ourselves, but for all Americans. That is why ours is a great nation, because time and again, Americans have been willing to serve on stages both great and small, to draw on the same spirit that launched America's improbable journey to meet the challenges of each defining moment of our history. Tomorrow, Saturday, as you observe the National Day of Service and Remembrance, please do not forget that we must continue to defend our values and ideals while simultaneously maintaining our freedom. We should never compromise our identity in the face of fear, and only together will we overcome the threat from violent extremists that still, sadly, 
exists today. Nine years later, we remember the victims of 9-11, but we also recall how Americans and our friends around the world came together, came together that day and in the days after. Today, we re renew that spirit of common service and our shared commitment to the endearing values we all cherish. Thank you all very much for coming here today. Thank you, Ambassador Davies. We will now, the Marine Security Guards will now bring the, the flag to half mast in memory of the victims of the attacks of September 11th. At the conclusion of the national anthem, which will be played, we will also observe a moment of silence. <laughs> 